Welcome, my name is Lauren and I'm a tutor at Noteful.com. For those of you who come to our YouTube channel regularly, you know that we have a series which we feature weekly on YouTube. And for those of you who don't know, we take a task from our Noteful forum where students submit their work and we respond to one of those great submissions here on YouTube in the form of a review where we provide some feedback, uh, some suggestions, and a score, of course. So we're really excited to feature this week's work this week, we're going to be focusing on something a little bit different. Again, those of you who've been watching, you know that we've been focusing on question one and two pretty consistently. But for this week, we're gonna be focusing on question five. So I want you to have a notebook and a pen ready because we're going to be uh, listening to the actual discussion. Before we do that, I wanna give you a little bit of a foundation. All right, so some of this may be a bit of a review. So let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so for those of you who watch our YouTube channel, you know that Joseph has a video where he really outlines all of the details about question five. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I think you probably have if you're here, but if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend that you go ahead and pause this video and watch that one as a supplement to this video. So you have some perspective and you know how to tackle this question. But if you've already seen it, just go ahead and keep watching. I'm going to give a little bit of foundation, but not too, too much. All right, so you guys know that question five is a campus situation question, and it's always a discussion between two students. Now, what these students are going to be discussing in their campus situation is, of course, a problem, right? And the student, one of the students will have a problem. They're going to also discuss two solutions and they're also going to be describing some pros and cons of these two solutions. The question that we always have to respond to is describe the man's or woman's problem and discuss which solution you would choose and why. So sometimes it's a little variation of that, but it's essentially the same exact task. All right, you're always going to be doing the exact same thing for this question. Okay, so now what we're going to do is actually listen to the discussion. So as I mentioned, you should have a notebook and a pen at this time because I want you to participate. I want you to take notes as well as you're actually listening. And the reason you're going to be doing that is because I wanna see uh, how you are going to compare what you would say to what the student is about to say. We're gonna listen to the student in just a bit um, after we go ahead and listen to the discussion. Hi, uh, good morning. Could you help me with something? Uh, maybe. What's up? Well, I'm a first year student. Everything going okay? Actually, no. Um, this is a little embarrassing. I think I left my class schedule back at my dorm. Hmm. Not a good thing to do on the first day of classes. Yeah. So, I'm not sure where my class is. I think I remember it was supposed to be here in Smith Hall. There's a computer for student use in the student center. You could go over there, look it up, and check the room number, but you'd have to hurry. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. I could check my schedule for the whole rest of the day at the same time. I don't know where any of my other classes are either, but I don't want to be late, make a bad impression with the professor on the first day. It's actually my very first class, Introduction to Psychology. Psychology? Oh, okay, you're definitely in the right building. And if it's Introduction to Psychology, it's going to be a big class, in which case it probably meets in a big lecture hall. There are only three lecture halls in the building, one on every floor. Just check each floor till you find yours. There's an elevator, so you should be able to move fast. Yeah, but I don't know what the professor looks like or anything. How will I know whether it's my class or not? It'd be sort of embarrassing, sticking my head into each lecture hall asking if I was in the right place. Well, you might luck out and find it the first time. Okay, so now that we've listened to the discussion, go ahead, pause this video, take 20 seconds. I want you to also organize your notes. And again, it's so that you have a sense of what exactly you would talk about. And you have a way to sort of grasp onto what you think you understood about this dialogue. Okay, if you are ready, So now we're going to listen to the student's response. And again, I want you to kind of think about 
how you would have responded or what you think the student needs improvement with in terms of the things that we've just discussed. Problems, solutions, pros and cons, and opinion. All right, so here we go. This conversation is between a first year student and a girl. The first year student was worried about his schedule because he has forgotten his schedule. So the girl advised him about a computer room where he could check about his schedule. But he was still worried because he didn't want to get late in his first day class. So he told her that his class is about introduction of psychology and she figured out that this kind of classes are used to be taught in big classes and there are three big classes per floor. But he is still worried about what the professor looks like because he didn't want to get a wrong class. So this is the summary of the conversation. Okay, so now that we've both listened to this student's response, we're going to talk about it a little bit in detail, and we're going to see if this student hit all of the points we discussed today. So first, we know that the student did describe the problem, right? The student said uh, that he had forgotten his schedule. So we know that the student did hear the key point about the problem. It's a little bit short. We only have one sentence. We know that we're trying to shoot for about two or three. So it's good though that we have that foundation, right? Uh, the next thing we see is solution one, right? We hear that. So we know that the student did catch the first one. However, what we do see next is the student starts to kind of shift out of the template. The student is just kind of describing the notes linearly. Linearly, for those of you who are not familiar with that word, means going in order at which it was heard, right? So the student is not sort of organizing the material, but just kind of reading from the notes at this point. Uh, we hear the disadvantage or the con of solution one coming next. We don't have any pros though. We don't have any advantages. Um, and so for those of you who are listening carefully, you might hear that there was an advantage, right? Uh, and you can compare your notes to make sure what that was. So next we do hear the student discussing the solution a little bit um, for solution two, but the student doesn't really present it in that way, right? The student doesn't really go into the detail about this is solution two and here it is, right? There's no introduction to it. The student is just kind of, like I said, linearly describing what happens in the dialogue. So we don't really know what the solution is. It wasn't clearly outlined for us as the listener. I had trouble recognizing it. So then the student starts to talk about the pros and cons, um, but we don't hear too many details about that. And if you were listening carefully, you'll probably see that the student also presented some information a little bit inaccurately. Uh, so go back and listen to that again, listen to the discussion again, or just look at your notes if you can see uh, what that difference is. I'm not gonna go into too much of that detail here, um, but you can probably see, uh, if you listen again, that there was a little bit of inaccuracy. But what I'm really concerned about is that the student didn't tick off the opinion, right? So we have the problem. We have solution one. We don't really have solution two. We have definitely a lot of cons for solution one and two, um, but we don't really see that opinion there, right? So we can't tick off that extra box, which is very important to our task. So now that we've sort of analyzed this response, let's go ahead and take a look at how the student would score. Okay, I wanna go through a couple of points before we look at the score. The first point being topic development. Now, for those of you who have had tutoring sessions, you know I talk about this a lot because this is one of the components of the rubric. And what a rubric is, is basically the format that graders use to give you a score. Topic development is one of those components that you're being scored on, All right? So why is this important that we use a template? What I wanted to do is just address that question. You have students who say, I don't like using templates because I think that the graders know them already. So they're gonna be bored, right? They, they've already heard this too many times. Everybody's using it. 
some students might say, well, it's too, com it's too simple. It's too simple, right? I, I don't think that that's going to get me a top level score. You have other students who say it's too complex, right? I can't really wrap my mind around it. I can't say this. Um, so you have a lot of different types of students out there. At the end of the day, the reason why template is important is because it helps you develop your topic. It helps you also be a little bit more smooth, right? So those, those are a couple of advantages to using a template. For this particular review that we're focusing on today, topic development is definitely what the student was lacking in, right? We didn't achieve the goal of the actual task, right? We didn't respond to the question fully. We described the problem, we described some of the solutions and some of the advantages or disadvantages, but we didn't really get to that final point, which was the opinion. And so the topic was not developed. It wasn't presented in a way that had a specific aim. So what I would rate this student at is a fair. I would give the student a 2.5 to a 3 for this particular task. And in total, if this were how the student delivered for the whole test, the whole speaking test, I would give the student a 19 to a 21 out of a 30. And that's going to be a range because, you know, every student is a little bit different. And I think that we didn't really focus on a lot of the elements. We just kind of focused on primarily the topic development, how the students structured. Uh, so we're not going to be considering too many of those things here today. Um, I'm sure you noticed some of those things here today. Um, definitely a great way to learn. And if you are the student who submitted this essay, or sorry, this response, go ahead and uh, send us an email if you have any further questions. But I hope this was helpful for you guys. So that's it for this week's video. I hope you really liked it. If you did like it, press a thumbs up in the like button below. And also, if you're interested in watching these videos each week, we submit them every week on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And also, as promised, those of you who have never submitted work and don't know how, there's a link in the description box below which will lead you to our forum. Every Wednesday, we present a task, both speaking and writing, and sometimes it's question one and two. As you can see, this one was question five. For writing, we tend to focus more on question two, but sometimes we do get involved with question one. So go ahead and click the link so you can participate in next week's video. And we'll see you again next time.